Hi there everyone, this is Greg Smith from Link Engineering Company. Today I've got some pretty exciting things that I would like to show you. I'm sitting inside of our demonstration vehicle that has a VMAX 4000 portable data acquisition system installed. And there's a few features that I'd like to show you today. One of those is that we have this vehicle connected to LabLink, which is a astounding piece of software that we've used extensively with our inside of our labs globally, as well as with a number of customers who've had great success in connecting their laboratory environment to the software. And in doing so, they can keep track of efficiency runtime reports, they can create test requests, perform maintenance, there's a lot of interesting things that we can do. And I want to show some of those things that can be done inside of a vehicle testing environment today. So I have a, a hotspot coming from my cell phone in this vehicle with a VPN connection connecting me back to our LabLink database in Plymouth. And while I'm doing this, I've got a GPS sensor in this vehicle and a bunch of other sensors installed as well. But there's a number of key attributes that we're going to be able to track while we're out on the road. One of those being my current position. And then I'm also going to be able to stream data that we collect. And while I'm out driving around streaming this data up to LabLink, people who have subscribed to the test request that I'm currently out running will actually have that data automatically synced to the location of their choice. So my laptop sitting on my desk at home will have all of the data that I recorded while out driving by the time I get home, which is pretty exciting. So as I had mentioned, our LabLink software has some pretty unique capabilities, and I'm going to show a little bit of those before we take off on this drive here. So we've got a test request module, scheduling, lab monitoring, and the lab monitoring and the data warehousing are what I'm going to show here today. But I've got the ability to go into our lab monitor and look at current status and I'm going to select the Plymouth Michigan laboratory and I can see all of the equipment that is currently communicating um, or has communicated in the past with this particular laboratory location and there's some filtering that I can do here I'm going to filter by just VMAX systems and I can see two of them one of which I have in my office downstairs which is not connected right now and then I've got this other one here, which is what I'm actually sitting inside of, this vehicle. And I can see that my current state is running. And if I were to go back and disable my logger here, we would see that my notification here is now that I'm no longer running. So if I go back in, we'll see that our system is now considered idle. And this would affect our machine runtime efficiency reports that we're able to generate inside of the LabLink software. In addition to this, I can also look at the current location of any of the systems that have GPS enabled and are reporting their locations. So as we'll see here, we can see my current GPS location. And as we go for a drive, we'll actually see this update. Now, in addition to LabLink being connected to this VMAX 4000, I've also got some exciting new other pieces of software that I want to show you today. So we have our live mapping software and I've got some GPS waypoints that are programmed in that are going to help provide the driver, being myself in this particular instance, some driver instructions and it's going to help me by doing some things like enabling the logger, changing my section number, changing the display screen that I'm looking at, changing updated target bars here to provide acceleration, deceleration targets, targeted speeds and some other exciting things like that. So as I begin driving and we hit these GPS waypoints, we'll notice that the system is able to respond to those and, and do some things. We're also going to notice as I drive around, this is my lab link uh, status notification window here, and as I begin collecting data, we'll see files update here, and then we will see those get uploaded to lab link. And as I mentioned before, as soon as they get uploaded to lab link, anyone who has subscribed to this particular test will immediately be downloading those. So within a couple of minutes of me returning home after my drive, I will have all of the data um, wherever I would like to have it stored, and I won't have to do any manual transfer of that data from the vehicle specifically. Okay, so with all of that said, I'm really excited to get out on the road and try some of these features out. Really like to show that to you guys. So let's go ahead and put this vehicle in drive and get moving. 
As I do, you'll notice that my section number, my logger, and a couple of other things are going to change as soon as I hit this first waypoint, which is halfway down my driveway. Beginning route. So you'll see now I'm on section 25. And I've got a speed target of 10 miles per hour. Don't want to go too fast in the driveway. Let's be safe and use our turn signal here. As soon as traffic clears, we're going to go ahead and head to the road. Accelerate to 55 miles per hour. So you'll notice now my target speed has been updated to 55 miles per hour. So I'm going to accelerate. We'll notice that I've got a acceleration deceleration target just beneath that which right now is just set to zero. I'm not controlling based off of that, but we will see that here in the upcoming moments. So you'll notice my live map is showing where I'm at currently. This is also being tracked in LabLink. If I were to go look there, we could see where the vehicle was located while out on a test route. I'll do a slight brake application here to log some data. On the upper right hand side of the screen, you're going to notice we've got some test files that are now being uploaded. And I'm collecting MP3 files at 51.2 kilohertz. Decelerate at 0.3 G and turn right onto M106. So you'll notice that my deceleration target there, the second bar on the bottom, was updated with a 0.3 G target. I've stopped short of the stop sign a little bit, so let's pull up. Accelerate at 0.1 G to 55 miles per hour. So now you'll notice I've got a acceleration target and a speed that I'd like to hit. So I'm going to do my best to maintain about 0.1 G of acceleration until I hit 55 miles per hour. Assuming that traffic stays clear in front of me. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and level off on my speed. We can see some of the other signals that I'm collecting off of CAN. I've got uh, steering angle, we've got some longitudinal, latitudinal accelerations, boost pressure, engine RPM. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, things. Uh, uh, throttle position here as well. You can see the second from the bottom lighting up red as I step on the throttle. I've got accelerometers mounted on the brake calipers of the vehicle, which are being sampled at 51.2 kilohertz, as I mentioned previously. A microphone in the cabin as well for detecting brake squeal. Load cell and a string potentiometer on the brake pedal. All right, so we are about to pull into the, uh, the greater downtown area of Gregory, Michigan here. You'll notice we've got a waypoint coming up. slow to 30 miles per hour and we'll see that my speed target there that top bar has actually been updated and hopefully keep me out of trouble with the local law enforcement by keeping my speeds where they should be and as we come around the corner here I've got another waypoint that's going to provide some instruction to the driver Turn right on M36 and then pull into parking lot at Gregory Market. So it's asking me to go ahead and pull into the parking lot here. And we'll notice when I do that that I'm actually going to have a different screen display for me with some additional instructions. Evaluate vehicle performance. It's also disabled my logger for me. And as we do that, I can go ahead and rate the vehicle performance. So now that we're pulled over on the side of the road, I'm going to go ahead and look at my lab monitor status here. And I'm going to go to our current location. And when I do this, we should be able to see where this vehicle that I'm in right now is currently located, as well as we should have a history of where it has been. And we'll see the very short route that I just took from my home to the Gregory Market, of which parking lot that we're currently parked in. Now at the same time, if I was interested in doing so and I hadn't subscribed to this test manually, I could go select this test request and as that pulls up in this drop down menu, I could look at what test data files exist for this test and I can select 
with our base and our media files and I would see those get displayed over on the right hand side of the screen and I could go ahead and do a download now. Now I've already got this syncing automatically. You can also go look at our, go back to lab monitor and look at our current status and I'm going to again go over to the Plymouth location. This can be set up in favorites, I just haven't done so yet. And I can now see that this vehicle is idle. So thank you very much for tuning in today, really appreciate your time. We at Link Engineering Company would love the opportunity to meet with you, provide a free demonstration or a consultation on how we can help you and assist you in your testing and your laboratory needs.